everybody, Ms. Roberts here for chapters 5 and 6. We are on chapter 5, go! Boca looked at Jack and grinned. Ready, he asked. I'm ready, said Annie. Where do we go get our surfboards? Down there, said Kama. She pointed at a rocky path that led to the beach. Let's go, said Annie. Annie, Boca, and Kama started down the path. Jack followed, moving slowly and carefully. When he stepped onto the beach, Jack slipped off his shoes. He dug his toes into the dry, warm sand. It felt soft as silk. Actually, I wouldn't mind just taking a walk on the beach, he said to the others. But no one else seemed to hear. They had all walked over to the row of wooden surfboards propped against the rocks. Boca picked up a long board and lugged it over to Jack. For you, he said. Jack took the board and looked up at it. It was as tall as his dad. Isn't this a little big for me, he asked. Boca shook his head. He chose a board for Annie. Then he and Kama grabbed a couple for themselves. Jack took a deep breath. I'd like to read a little about surfing first, he said. He put his board down and pulled out his research book. What is that? asked Kama. It's a book, said Jack. It tells you about things. How does it talk? said Kama. It doesn't talk, said Annie. You read it. Kama looked confused. Jack forget... Jack, forget the book now, Annie said. Let's just do what Boca and Kama tell us. She headed for the ocean and lugged her board. Jack sighed and put the book away. He left his pack in the sand, picked up his board, and followed the others. They all stopped at the edge of the water. First, we need to get past the breaking waves, said Kama. Then we'll show you what to do next. Together, they waded into the cool, shallow water. The waves don't seem that big, Jack thought, hopefully. But as he waded deeper into the ocean, the breaking waves began to look bigger and bigger. Then the first wave hit him. Jack leaned against it, lifting his board. He nearly fell over. Kama and Boca and Annie moved faster out into the ocean. Jack watched as, wave, as a wave loomed over them. They all threw their boards over the wave and dove into it. Jack shrugged for, struggled forward. The next time a big wave came toward him, he threw his board over it. Holding his glasses tightly, he ducked under. Then Jack stood up again. He wiped the water from his glasses. His surfboard was close by. He grabbed it before another wave came. I missed something. I don't know when he came off the board. Jack struggled forward. The next time a big wave came toward him, he threw his board over it. Oh, so he must have left him off of it. Holding his glasses tightly, he dunked under. Then Jack stood up again. He wiped the water up from his eyes and glasses. His surfboard was close by. He grabbed it before another wave came. Jack kept fighting his way forward. By the time he got past all the breakers, the water was up to his chest. We'll paddle out to catch a big wave, said Boca. Jack frowned. But don't worry, Jack, said Kama. It will be fun. Boca and Kama pulled themselves onto their boards. The, the, they lay on their bellies and pa began paddling with their hands out in the sea. Jack and Annie lay down on their boards, too, paddling over the gentle waves. Jack relaxed. Jack relaxed. Now this was something he could do all day. When I say go, paddle fast back towards the shore, said Kama. When do we stand up, said Annie. When you start toward the shore, said Boca, standing up with one foot forward, stretch out your arms to keep your balance. But don't try to stand up very fast. Very, oh, sorry. Don't try to stand up the first time said Kama. Just ride your board on your belly. I see you coming now, said Boca. Oh, sorry. I see one coming now, said Boca. Wait, wait, said Jack. Everything was happening so fast. He had questions. Go, Kama shouted. Jack saw a big wave rolling towards them. Before he knew it, Boca and Kama and Annie were paddling quickly towards the shore. Jack paddled like crazy to keep up. Suddenly, the wave, lift, the wave lifted him and swept him forward. Jack zoomed towards the shore. With amazing speed, out of the corner of his eye, he saw Boca and Kama and Annie all standing up. Jack wanted to be like them. In a flash, he went up on his knees. He put his left foot forward and stood up. For one second, he felt like a soaring bird. Then he lost his balance. Jack fell into the water, grabbing his glasses just in time. The wave crashed down on top of him. Water filled his mouth and went up in his nose. His board and his leg were swept away. Jack twisted and turned in the churning water. When his head bobbed up above the water, he choked and coughed. 
Another big wave crashed down on him. He went under again. Then he came up. He plunged forward, desperately trying to get to shore. Again and again, Jack was thrown down and slammed by breaking waves. But each time, he got up and hurled himself closer to shore. Finally, Jack dragged himself out of the ocean, feeling bruised, battered. He fell onto the sand. Chapter 6. Shake Up Jack! cried Annie. She ran to him. Are you okay? Jack just nodded. He put his wet glass he put on his wet glasses. He felt shaky and mad at himself. I never should have tried to stand, he thought. Kama picked up Jack's surfboard from the shallow water and brought it over to him. I told you not to stand, he said, laughing. You fell hard. It's not funny, thought Jack. I nearly drowned. The best thing to do is to go right back out, said Boca. You go, said Jack. His eyes and nose burned from the salt water. I'll stay here. He walked over to his pack and picked it up and took out the research book. Come on, Jack, said Annie. Try it again. Stay on your belly this time. No, this time I'm going to read about surfing first, he said. Ah, uh, I said, ah, you should just try it again, said Annie, not read about it. She ran to him, pulled the book out of his hands. Jack jerked it away from her. He slipped and fell onto the sand. Kama and Boca laughed again. Why are you laughing, Jack snapped. You don't even know how to read. Boca and Kama looked hurt. Jack, said Annie, that was mean. Say you're sorry. Jack opened his book and pretended to read it. He did feel sorry, but he was too upset to say so. Fine, stay here, said Annie. She went back to Boca and Kama. Let's go. As Jack sat alone on the beach, he looked up from his book. He watched the other kids paddling through the water. I don't care, he muttered. I'm never going back out on those waves. Morgan didn't send us here to surf anyway, he thought. She told us to build a ship. But how the heck are we supposed to do that? Jack heaved an angry sigh. Now he was crossing his cross with Morgan. He turned to the be he turned back to the book and searched the index for ship. Suddenly, Jack heard a rumbling from under the sand. The ground started to shake. It shook so hard the book flew out of Jack's hands. Jack bounced up and down on the beach. Shells were jumping up and down too. Rocks tumbled from a cliff. It's an earthquake, thought Jack. The rumbling stopped. The shaking stopped. Jack looked around. Everything was normal again, except some rocks rolled around the bottom of the cliff. Jack looked out to sea. Kama, Boca, and Annie were all past breakers. They were sitting on their surfboards, laughing and talking. Everything seemed okay, but Jack felt sure that something was wrong. He grabbed the Hawaii book from the sand. He looked up earthquake. He read, Earthquakes in Hawaii have been known to cause tsunamis, which used to be called tidal waves. An earthquake can cause water out at sea to be set in motion. The water grows higher and higher as it moves towards land. Just before the tsunami strikes, water may pull away from the shore. Then it returns in a gigantic wave that crashes over the land and washes everything away. Oh man, thought Jack, a tsunami might be coming. Oh no. We'll have to find out more when I read later with chapters 7 and 8 because we are done with chapters 5 and 6. I hope you are having a wonderful Monday. Bye-bye.